Hi, my name is Dr. Harry Witchell from Brighton and Sussex Medical School, and this is a brief screencast to describe numeracy in medicine topic, calculating doses from stock solutions with percentage dosages. So here's a question that we might want to solve. A 64-year-old man presents to the emergency department with a scalp laceration. Before suturing, he requires infiltration of the surrounding tissue with lidocaine, hydrochloride which is available at 2% solution in 2 ml ampules. The man weighs 70 kilograms. The recommended dose for this person is 150 mg. What is the volume of lidocaine that should be injected? So here's our approach. First of all, we're always going to include the units to make sure that we never get into any problems where we're trying to interact units of different types. Second of all, we're going to change the units to all be the same for all parts of the equation. And here's the equation that we're going to use. The total a dose applied to a person is equal to the concentration of the stock solution times the volume of the solution uh, of the sol stock solution that's being administered. So let's return to the question. Here we have all this stuff about the 64-year-old man, and most of the beginning of the question is actually unnecessary, except for this what we're circling here. This 2% solution is very relevant because it's the concentration of the stock solution. Likewise, this 150 mg is relevant as the total dose that's going to be applied to the person. Now, we have this 2% stock solution. What does that mean in terms of concentration? Well, 100% solution is 1 gram per mil. As you remember, a, a mil of water equals a gram, so 100% weight by volume means that 1 gram of 1 mil, if we had our stock, stock solution having a full gram in only a mil, there would be no water and it would be 100% of the drug. Now, a 2% solution is 0 0.02, that's 300%, 0 0.02 grams per mil. That's how many grams of the solute would be in 1 mil of solvent, the solvent in this case being water. Now we can also change that 2% solution into mg per mil, that is we divide grams by 1000 by multiplying the 0 0.02 by 1000. So by multiplying that we get 20 mg per mil. So here we return to our equation. We remember that 150 mg milligrams is the entire dose needed for the person is equal to 20 mg per mil, the concentration, times x ml, where x is the unknown volume in milliliters. Now, but wait a minute, you're asking, you ask about what is about the person's weight or the 2 ml ampule? But nearly, they're almost valuable. You see, the thing is, the 2 ml ampules are not needed. They're extra information in this equation. If we asked you how many ampules of drug you would need, then you might want to know that this is packaged in 2 ml ampules. But that's not really relevant. Similarly, the, with the weight, the 70 kilograms, if the dose was 150 milligrams per kilogram of weight, then you'd need to know the weight of the person. But this dose is actually listed as 150 milligrams in total, that is, per person, not per kilogram. So returning to the equation we need, we have 150 milligrams equals 20 milligrams per milliliter times x ml. Let's solve for x, and that's going to be x ml equals 150 milligrams divided by 20 mg per mil. Well, the way that you figure that, the way that we got from the upper equation to the lower is first of all, we just move the XML to the other side of the, we essentially are solving for this side by dividing 150 milligrams by 20 mg per mil. So we're dividing that part and then we're moving things across from one side to another. Now that can be rearranged given that we want to look at the, how the units work is the number 150 divided by the number 20 and then in terms of units we have milligrams divided by milligrams per milliliter which turns into milligrams times mil per mig so you're probably wondering where the mil per mig is comes from and that's the reciprocal mil per mig is the reciprocal of mig per mil whenever you divide by a unit then it's like multiplying by the reciprocal now that we know that the units are mig per migs times mil per mig we can cross out both milligrams so that we are going to see that we're going to end up with just milliliters as our final unit. In fact, since we're crossing things out that are being divided, if we're dividing 150 divided by, one, by 20, 
and you can see that the zeros cro cross out. So we're actually dividing what 15 divided by 2. So the final answer is x in milliliters equals 7.5 milliliters. And that's the final answer. Thank you.